Hi, this is William Ramsey. The following video is about the disappearance and death of Joey LeBute in Columbus, Ohio. On the night of March 4th, 2016, Joey LeBute went to the Union Cafe in what's known as the Short North section of Columbus, Ohio. At 12.30 a.m. on the morning of March 5th, 2016, Joey LeBute got up from his table to go to the bar to buy a drink. He was never seen again. LeBute was 26 years old, a graduate of Ohio State University. As you can see in this map, the Union Cafe is in downtown Columbus, about 100 miles south of the I-90. It's located roughly between the downtown of Columbus, Ohio, and the Ohio State University campus. On the map, you can see the Scioto River traveling from northeast on the map to the center of the map and then down farther south. It's important to remember in this case. Joey LeBute was last seen on the early morning of March 5th, 2016. He didn't make it to his car as it was found parked in the same place he had left it Friday night. The following clips are local TV reporting following the disappearance of Joey LeBute. March 8th. Developing now, police are trying to solve the mysterious disappearance of a Gehanna man who vanished over the weekend. An intense search is now underway to bring this young man home safely. NBC 4's Marcus Thorpe joining us live from the last spot where Joe LeBute was seen. Good morning. And good morning. Yeah, right here at the Union Cafe about four days ago, actually, and certainly troubling for friends and family as they found his car just a short a uh, spot away from where we are here, but it hadn't been driven. It was in the exact same spot where he left it. And now the businesses here in the short north also getting involved, putting out flyers, trying to get anybody that has seen him to make sure that they let folks know they're trying to find him. He has not been returning calls or texts over the last three or four days. Now, according to the missing persons from Ohio Facebook page, LeBute was with a couple of his cousins on Friday night here at the Union in the short north family went down to the short north area looking for his car as i mentioned they did find that but no sign that he had been near there now family members worked hard on filing reports too with columbus police as well as making sure gehanna police were aware of the situation and on that facebook page friends say it is very out of character for him not to be making contact with anyone march 9th 2016 Columbus police are hoping that hours of surveillance video provides clues to what happened to a man who went missing this weekend. Joey LeBute Jr. was last seen at the Union Cafe on High Street in the short north. NBC4's Olivia Fecto is live at Columbus Police Headquarters tonight with the latest on this investigation and how LeBute's family is handling all of this. The 26-year-old was last seen at the Union Cafe on High Street in the short north. Kind-hearted very um he's social and has a lot of friends very likable um but he's not on the bar scenes if you want to say his aunt julie holly says labute works full-time at morgan stanley and is a graduate of osu four days after his disappearance she and other family members are beyond worried march 10th 2016. It's been nearly a week now since Joy LeBute Jr. was last seen at a bar in the short north. Today, his friends and family are speaking to NBC4 about their fears. The 26-year-old was with, out with cousins and friends at the Union Cafe last Friday. And that's where Olivia Fecto joins us live tonight. Olivia, his family must be terrified. Yeah, Ali, we and they are still waiting for Columbus police to release the surveillance video from here at the Union Cafe from last Friday night. And his family tells me they are hoping to see that video soon. Right now, though, every day that passes is amplifying their fears that something may have happened. I just, just want to come home. Through the years, Stacy Regal says her cousin Joey LeBute Jr. has been like a brother. We would argue, we would, we would have fun, we would laugh, we would play video games, like, we were just... We've just always been really close. The last time she saw her cousin was Friday, the night this photo was taken. Regal says she was out with her husband, LeBute, and others in the short north. He was really happy when we got there, and we just had a good time. Like, we were singing and dancing, and um, the next thing I knew, we were trying to get a hold of them and couldn't. His disappearance has left family members and friends confused and fearing the worst. We don't want to go there, but... They still don't have a lot of answers. His half-brother, Patrick, says Joey is a gentle, easygoing person. Yeah, he would never go out of his way to, to, to do anything to anyone. So just thinking about him out there and that someone would want to do that to him, if that is, you know, 
That's where our minds are going. From family members to longtime friends like Justin Mertz, the emotions are intense. It's just, it's scary. Super scary. A surreal situation. It's crazy. You don't think that something like this is ever going to happen to you. One they hope will be over soon. March 11th, 2016. surveillance video that Columbus police had hoped would provide some clues to what might have happened to a missing man is virtually unusable. That's the latest from police a week after Joey LeBute Jr. was last seen. Tonight in an NBC4 exclusive, LeBute's parents speak out for the very first time. Olivia Fecto is live in the short north with their story. Olivia. Well, detectives say the video from inside the Union Cafe is poor quality and that the bar was crowded that night. As the search for LeBute enters the one-week mark, his parents say they are still hoping he'll come home. He wouldn't put all of us through this for... No. I mean, if he could come home, I, I know he wouldn't. He wouldn't yeah. be doing this. Liz LeBute has been Joey LeBute Jr.'s stepmom since 1999, when she married his father, Joe. He's our boy, and we, we want him home. The 26-year-old has been missing since last weekend after a night out in the short north. His relatives and friends can't figure out what happened. And for a few days, they were just confused. He's probably just somewhere he's going to yeah, come back. Maybe that's, and even though that also would not be like him at all, no. it's still when it was only half two a day days, yeah. or two days, um, it was like, okay, maybe he'll show up at work on Monday morning. When he didn't, worry set in. There's nothing normal. <laughs> No, I haven't gone back to work. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't been, been at work all week. Um, and frankly, I'm not sure how I'm going to go next week. With support from friends and the community, the family is spreading the word and handing out flyers, hoping their son will return safely. We love you, and uh, we're trying to get you back. March 12th, 2016. On March 12th, 2016, one week after the disappearance of Joey LeBute, 200 volunteers scoured the neighborhoods of Short North and the Arena District near downtown Columbus, Ohio, looking for Joey LeBute. March 27, 2016. On March 27, 2016, the Columbus Dispatch published an article indicating the search for Joey LeBute was still continuing. March 30th, 2016, a body is found in the Scioto River, south of downtown Columbus, Ohio. As you all know, we found a, a body today, and it, it is the body of a male in his 20s. We have now an uh, investigation where we believe uh, there's some type of suspicious death. I, I can't tell you the extent of that suspiciousness, but we have a male in his 20s, and we don't know why uh, he, he died. Or, so we've made a preliminary examination of the body with the coroner, and now they've taken the body to the coroner's office where it's uh, scheduled for an autopsy in the morning. I would assume um, late morning we will be able to positively identify this body and try to determine exactly who it is. And obviously at that point we're going to continue to try to figure out the circumstances surrounding this death. Our Special Victims Bureau, they've been conducting, uh, as they always do, conducting an investigation. Uh, into missing persons and so one of the elements to their investigations that they're conducting is they wanted the uh, dive team the Columbus police dive team to check the bodies of water uh, and this was one of the bodies of water that they wanted to check uh, my understanding is the uh, dive team came out early this morning and um, probably got going late morning so they started a uh, systematic search of this body of this particular body of water you can see the Union Cafe at the top center of the map with the star. That was where Jolie the Butte was last seen on March 5th in the early morning at 12.30 a.m. And the body was found in the Scioto River south of downtown Columbus um, at the bottom of this curve. So the Butte would have had to have walked or left the bar and made it there that same night without being seen. Very unlikely. This is the part of the Seattle River where the body was found. You can tell that this is where the police launched their boat. It's some the body was found somewhere in this uh, part of the curve of the Seattle River, and you can tell by looking at some of the video that 
parts of this river are very shallow. And somewhere around um, one or so, I believe, is when they found this particular body. It didn't seem like the body was too decomposed. It was in relatively good, pretty good uh, condition. Whoa, listen to that again. A body in water starts decomposing within about five days. And it was three weeks since Joey Labute was last seen. It didn't seem like the body was too decomposed. It was in relatively good, pretty good uh, condition. So no noticeable no wounds on the body? Gunshot, knife? Um, I shouldn't comment on that at this point, but um, again, we believe it's a suspicious death. This is good news. Many other suspicious water deaths are considered uh, deaths by misadventure or suicides and not investigated by police from the beginning. The suspicious nature of Joey Labute's death is being treated properly by the Columbus Police Department. So I'm not really sure. You couldn't make a positive ID, so obviously no wallet, no ID, nothing like that on him. Um, I'm not saying that, but I know we definitely cannot make a positive identification at this point. The county coroner confirming today the body recovered from the Scioto River earlier this week is that of 26-year-old Joey Labute Jr. Yes, Dwayne, there's definitely a great feeling of sadness and loss here in the short north area tonight. There's a vigil that's being planned by community members here at Goodale Park, like you said. And some of those people are also businesses that helped reach out to the family and search for Joey Labute when he went missing over three weeks ago. Our thoughts and prayers go out to the entire family. Tonight, Sam Schisler, Chief Marketing Director for the Union Cafe, says the community is coming together to remember it's Joey Labute. And when things like this happen to us here, it's not just, you know, me or you, you know, or you. It, it, it's all of us, you know, and we take it very personal. And that's something you don't get everywhere. Labute was last seen at the Union Cafe on March 5th. Several businesses in the short north came together to help the family spread the word about his disappearance, handing out flyers and posters. And then Tuesday, a body was recovered in the Scioto River. Through search efforts and posting, it's gone national news. And, and then today, we got the official news that the body that was found was Joey's. Schistler says he didn't know Labute personally, but has staff who are friends with him. It could have been my son, you know. It could have been my nephew. It could have been someone, one of my friends that I helped with. On March 31st, 2016, the Columbia Dispatch published an article stating that Joey Labute likely had died prior to going into the river. And this was a statement made by the Franklin County Coroner Anahi Ortiz. The recent death of Joey Labute fits the profile of what's known as the smiley face killings. Two detectives say that they can link the murder of a Minneapolis college student to the disappearances and deaths of dozens of college men across the country. When you finish watching this story, make sure that you click on all of the links to the exclusive web content in the center of this page. All of this has been a mystery until now. Patrick McNeil, Chasky Moan, Jack Kazicki. All across the country. Michael Noel. The stories are all the same. Ryan Wells in. An athletic. Craig Burrows. Intelligent. Adam Falcon. Well liked college student goes missing. Family and friends launch a massive search. Weeks or months later, the young man is discovered drowned. In more than 40 cases, the deaths are blamed on a drunken accident except for one. Chris Jenkins. The death of Chris Jenkins in Minneapolis is the only one where the cause of death was changed from an undetermined drowning to homicide. The level of evil that we're dealing with here is rampant, it's deep, and it's widespread. Because of evidence two retired New York police detectives uncovered in a cross-country investigation, Jan Jenkins now says she knows exactly what happened to her son Halloween night 2002. Chris was abducted in a cargo van. He was driven around Minneapolis for hours and tortured. He was taken down to the Mississippi River and he was murdered. Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte are the retired cops who say they've discovered a link between Jenkins' death and the drownings of at least 40 other men in 25 cities in 11 different states. In city after city, at that crucial spot, they say they'd find the killer's trademark, a smiley face. 
This one they believe is from a crime eight years ago in Wisconsin. They found this one in Ohio, this one in Pennsylvania, and this one in Indiana. They believe this one is the most recent, found in Iowa. The paint color and the size of the face varies, but the detectives are convinced it's the killer's sick signature. The detectives believe the large gang operates in small pods based in different cities. That's why the killings are clustered. In Minnesota and Wisconsin, 18 young men who fit the same profile have disappeared since 1997. The majority in La Crosse, Eau Claire, Minneapolis, and St. Cloud. Adding to the high strangeness of Joy LeBute's death is that a similar disappearance took place 10 years ago to the date right down the street with a similar fact pattern. A young man having drinks at a bar disappears out of the bar and the surveillance equipment sees nothing. On April 1st, 2006, right before closing down, Brian Schaefer disappeared out of the ugly Tuna Saluna on High Street just north of the Union Cafe where Joey LeBute disappeared. Schaefer was about one year older than Joey LeBute. The surveillance equipment at the Ugly Tuna Saluna failed to show Schaefer leaving the bar. His body was never found. Schaefer's girlfriend at the time of his disappearance is in this next video. So it has been almost 10 years now since that night that he disappeared. So we were in medical school in our first year of medical school, actually, in class. And I th thought he was cute, and one of my friends told him at a concert, and then he called and asked me if I wanted to go and have dinner and study. That's how it started. Well, it seemed like it was a, you know, a pretty good, normal relationship. I mean, I spent time with his family, he spent time with my family, and I mean, a lot of it was, a lot of it was all very medical school, you know, centered. That night, I talked to talked to him on the I talked to Brian on the phone, and he was getting ready to go out with with his friends. So they see him get there. They see him go up the escalator to get to the bar, but nobody ever sees him leave. We made missing posters and we started hanging them all over the place, and then. Um, you know, from there, we just started searching everywhere. We looked, you know, up and down the, the Olentangy River. We looked in every dumpster that there was on campus. I just was, I just remember being, I was very brokenhearted and just very scared and didn't really know what to think. You know, but the, I think the main question always came down to, is he dead or did he run away? Those are the two main, you know, something happened and he just, either ended up somewhere nobody could find him or somebody got rid of him and that always made them think it was somebody that you know that could have known him or you know wasn't just a random thing or did he just take off um i think the i i think it was close to a year before i stopped calling the phone i think about a year after that was when i finally said okay i i got to stop and so i you know would occasionally but really stopped you know calling the phone The disappearance and death of Joey LeBute and the disappearance of Schaefer are within the geographical area of the I-90 where other young men have disappeared only to be found later in water. Keep an eye on the Joey LeBute case. The Columbus police could establish that Joey LeBute was murdered and dropped in the river, thereby influencing other police departments around the country to reconsider rushed conclusions made in disappearance and drowning cases.